This hard Tory Brexit has hitherto unknown ramifications, but we in Scotland know one thing. It will be painful. Bitter experience tells us this. My own constituency of Cobridge, Christ and Bells Hill faces having local industry decimated by the UK leaving the EU. Last year, prior to the referendum, Muller, the German dairy producer, announced it would be investing an additional £15 million in its Bells Hill plant. The single market means that imported ingredients are tariff-free, helping keep production costs down. Likewise, the single market means that Scottish exports to the EU are tariff-free, helping to keep consumer prices down and encourage growth. My constituency has faced years of deprivation due to Thatcherism and deindustrialisation. The growing Scottish food and drinks industry has provided new hope, but this industry again faces decline due to short-sighted Tory policy and a looming hard Tory Brexit. I have heard several members now quote Edmund Burke and would remind all of his quote, I most associate with both the Scottish and European referendums. The people never give up their liberties but under some delusion. That is the real reason behind both referendum results. Hear, hear. I hold in my left hand this poor excuse of a sick note. This is what the Westminster Government has produced in seven months by way of an explanation to the people of the UK of what a hard Tory Brexit means. Contrast this, if you will. Well, I hold in my right hand. Yeah. This is the Scottish Government's considerably yep. compromised proposal yeah, yeah, yeah. to Westminster, yeah, yeah. As, a, as is befitting for an equal partner in a difficult negotiation where due consideration must be given to the other party's position. That means compromise for those on the benches opposite yeah. who perhaps need it spelled out to them. It is therefore only fit and proper that this House, and particularly the Government, consider this document, Scotland's place in Europe, and fully engage as an equal partner with the Scottish Government on the best Brexit outcome for Scotland and the UK as a whole. I would highlight some of the key points of, uh, as, as, I, as best I can, but time does not permit me to go in as deep as I would like. We in the SNP concur with those who believe that the Leave prospectus put forward during the referendum was deeply flawed and that the lack of preparation for leaving by those responsible for that campaign remains deeply damaging uh, aspect of the current consti constitutional crisis. The lack of any plan seven months after the vote illustrates perfectly the Brexiteers were the dog that finally caught the bus and, having done so, had no clue what to do with it and no plan to implement. <laughs> this situation is not of the making of the SNP. It has been caused by the original flawed decision to hold an EU referendum and the fact that the vote to leave was due to England and Wales voting leave. The contents of this paper, I hold, presents a significant compromise on the part of the Scottish Government. I do hope the Prime Minister is listening and learns from this great example of strong, informed, communicative leadership. This is what transparency looks like when you have a plan. This paper sets out the Scottish Government's vision in terms of the best outcome for Brexit for the whole of the UK. It presents the evidence of the negative impact of any other approach on the economic and social prosperity of Scotland and, by extension, the UK as a whole. Again, contrast the Scottish Government document Scotland's place in Europe against the Government's document. This sick note for seven months of absentee governance in respect of a clear evidence-based Brexit plan is a joke. In conclusion, then, Mr. Speaker, the Westminster Government would do well to take a leaf from the Scottish Government's Brexit plan. Here, here, in, in, here. in fact, here. don't take one leaf of Scotland's place in Europe. Take all 50. Here, here, here.